Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, let me say as he's leaving the room that I was glad to hear uh, Mr. Labrador stress the importance of the American tradition of welcoming people, non-Americans, to come to our shores to exercise religious freedom. And I was particularly pleased that unlike some others, he did not exclude Muslims from that tradition. I think that is an important principle of which we, I hope, will continue to be proud. I'm sorry, was that a gavel? I, no, no, no. Oh, it, I, it, it, there was a... Oh, I just get They were gavel. adjusting the mic and it, it pulled out the cord and it, I, it made I'm, a sound, sorry. Still gavel conscious when I'm here. <laughs> the, um, uh, the next thing I want to say is that I, I appreciate this uh, uh, telling us that we should all be nice. Uh, and I would reciprocate by saying, yeah, okay, how about being nice to me? Uh, I was here for 32 years. We used to say that we don't take things personally and most of the time we don't. But Mr. Chairman, this is very personal. This is a legislative enactment that essentially says that the fact that I live in a loving, committed marriage with another man is somehow a threat to other people's freedom. And the Congress has to single that out to act against it. And let me make this point. You talk about mischaracterization. This is not a bill to protect religious liberty in general. It singles out one particular religious tenet, the notion that same-sex marriage is morally wrong, oh, and also thrown in that non-marital sex is wrong. There are a whole lot of religious tenets that are under attack. So this one singles it out. And when the senator said, uh, well, uh, let's be kind and respectful, I don't feel respected. I don't feel that this is kind to single out what I do. And I got to say, Mr. Chairman, I got married when I was still here. I don't think any of the people with whom I serve, some of whom are still here, were in any way inconvenienced or compromised or that their religious freedom was impinged. And I don't understand why you have to single out my marriage as something against which people have to be protected. And single out is what you do. And as far as tolerance is concerned, I want to be very clear. I think people who are here serve with me, I have never been overly sensitive to people's opinions. Maybe the opposite is the case. <laughs> but when there was a bill to outlaw the practices of one of the outstanding homophobic bigots of our time, that nut from Kansas, who used to go and picket cemeteries, because he said that's the gay people's fault. I was one of three members of the House who voted against that. Three of us, Ron Paul, Dave Wu, and I, voted to allow this bigot to continue to demonstrate his bigotry. Supreme Court sided with us. Any of you who are here, you probably voted for that bill, who had been there at the time. This is not a case of uh, people's right to f think what they think or feel what they feel. This bill, and I will differ specifically with Mr. Labrador on this, empowers people to take my tax money and use it to do things and then exclude me and Jim from its benefit and a lot of other people as well. Because, Mr. Labrador said with regard to housing, he specifically wanted to object to that. I spent a lot of my time here working on affordable housing. We created the Low Income Housing Trust Fund. I was glad to do, Mr. Jordan's not here, but his predecessor, uh, Mike Oxley and I worked together on that. And it says that you can build housing with federal funds for low-income renters. A very large number of these, contrary to Mr. Labrador's view, and I say this because I specialize in this area, are nonprofits. Nonprofit developers are major sponsors of housing. And this bill explicitly says that the federal government may not say to a nonprofit developer, if you intend to exclude same-sex married couples, we're not going to let you use the money to do that so that they can take the money I pay. I pay taxes, and as some of you will discover, I pay a lot more taxes now than when I was here. And you're going to take the tax money I pay and build housing and say people like me can't live there because we somehow would be offensive regardless of our behavior. And telling us that it won't impinge on any other existing civil right is meaningless because in much of the country there is no such right. The Supreme Court says we have a right to be married. There is no federal legislation, and in many states, no other legislation that protects us against discrimination. So the argument that, oh, you don't have to worry because existing statutes aren't uh, preempted is irrelevant to many, many Americans who live in places where there is no such statute. It also, I was struck, I think it was uh, uh, Senator Lee who said, well, what about uh, people who administer programs uh, involving care for children? And they believe that the... Uh, the child is best served by a marriage with two parents, a mother and a father. Well, if you believe that, and if you believe the child has been disadvantaged by not having it, how do you morally justify further disadvantaging that child by denying him her benefits? 
because that's what this bill allows. It says that if you are, that we can say, hey, the child of a same-sex couple or an unmarried parent, no, we, we, don't, we don't approve of that, and we're going to exclude that. So you punish the child. Nothing in here says that you cannot do that. And finally, it would allow state employees. Now, federal employees, can, uh, you, you, you exclude from this. But state employees are not covered in the uh, exemptions. A lot of federal programs are administered by state employees. So as this now reads, it's very much open to the interpretation that state federal programs, unemployment compensation, disability, you could disapprove of and exclude people like that. So, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I can't say I'm glad that we're having this hearing. I, I really resent the fact that you're having this hearing. You're singling me and a lot of other people out who don't deserve this from you. We don't deserve the uh, unkindness and the disrespect that we get. If you were talking about people generally being protected because their religious views might be under assault, then bring out a general bill. But to say that same-sex marriage is somehow the issue and that people should be allowed to take federal money and discriminate against those of us who are in same-sex marriages, which this bill clearly does in some ways for nonprofit contractors, for example, it violates a great principle, and I'll close with this, for people who say I'm somehow assaulting them. I'm not talking about private citizens. I'm talking about people who decide voluntarily to go after federal money. And a great former member of this body, Gus Hawkins, said when he presided over a bill that said you can't take federal money and discriminate, if you're going to dip your fingers in the federal till, don't complain if a little democracy rubs off on them. I hope that principle will win out.